Skywatch Media News for July the 30th, 2020. As the final week of July comes to a close, the Earth finds itself in the midst of a flurry of asteroid activity once again. Five asteroids, all classified as near-Earth objects and considered to be quite large, came within 4.6 million miles of our planet. On July 27th, an asteroid the size of a small house designated 2020-001 passed the Earth at a close distance of 416,000 miles, or about twice as far as the distance between the Earth and the Moon. The asteroid was first spotted on July the 20th by the University of Hawaii's PanSTARRS-1 telescope. Astronomers have determined that the orbit of this asteroid has a small chance of hitting the Earth in the year 2087. The following day, July 28th, we witnessed four flybys within a 24-hour period. Two of these large asteroids, 2020-NZ and 2020-0-E2, flew by at a safe distance of 1.931 and 1.056 million miles. The two asteroids that followed shortly thereafter approached much closer to the Earth. The first one, named 2020-0-Y4, is roughly the size of a car. It passed dangerously close to the Earth at a distance of only 25,786 miles. This was followed by an asteroid measuring more than 85 feet, passing beyond Earth at a distance of nearly 284,000 miles. The last two asteroids would be considered as close approaches, since the distance between the Earth and the Moon is just under 239,000 miles, placing both of them within the danger zone. Neither of these asteroids posed an immediate threat to our planet. But if the latter asteroid, designated 2020-0-R4, measuring 85 feet, had penetrated the Earth's atmosphere, the blast from its entry could have been equivalent to, or even greater than, the Shelobinsk asteroid of 2013, which had a diameter of 56 feet. When considering the monitoring of near-Earth asteroids by NASA's telescopes, we have a tendency to associate the number of NEO discoveries with a bit of skepticism. But it's certainly not unreasonable to be concerned by the recent barrage of space rocks that are approaching our planet. Occasionally, we may learn that a comet or an asteroid has been observed and recorded by ordinary citizens who may be utilizing an outreach program that just happens to be sponsored by the space agency. This was a case recently when two 14-year-old girls from India discovered an asteroid that one day will cross the Earth's path. The stargazer spotted the space rock called HLV-2514 using a program entitled All India Asteroid Search Campaign. According to the program's director, the discovery is a near-Earth object currently near the planet Mars that will become an Earth-crossing asteroid in the distant future. The newly discovered asteroid was spotted at about the same time that NASA astronomers spotted the outbound Chinese probe Tianwen-1, which is presently on a seven-month journey to Mars. The Chinese probe was spotted by the Atlas MLO on July the 24th while on its way to the planet Mars. While scanning the sky for wayward asteroids, it may seem as if our planetary defense system is working as expected. But the successful rate of asteroid detection may actually be short-lived. Recently, an astronaut from the European Space Agency, a mission specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery in the year 2007, and a recent member aboard the International Space Station, posted a warning on Twitter, indicating that there are presently more than one million asteroids that have the potential to strike Earth. 
His warning is in the form of a brief video capture, and it comes as a stern reminder that the nations on earth are ignoring the probability of a sudden strike, that the time to act is now. The video taken aboard the International Space Station during the 53rd mission in 2017 clearly shows an asteroid passing Earth's orbit. The ominous capture was posted to mark World Asteroid Day, which occurs on June the 30th. It was meant to let the world know that we are not safe from incoming space rocks, and that we must devote more of our time and our ingenuity in a more productive manner if we hope to curtail the dangers posed by outside forces. On July 29th, a tremendous fireball lit up the sky over Colorado and New Mexico. According to the American Meteor Society, there were 68 reports of a fireball spotted across the United States at around 3 a.m. Universal Time. The incredible event captured the moment that the meteorite broke up upon entry into the Earth's atmosphere. An eyewitness described the event as a slow, bright flare that broke into three pieces and flashed multiple times before falling behind the hills. If you ever had the opportunity to observe noctilucent clouds in the northern latitudes, then you probably realize that these wispy iridescent clouds are supposed to be electric blue in appearance. On July 25th, something very unusual took place in the sky over Sweden. In a rare display, the tops of the clouds of electric blue suddenly turned a shade of dark red at around midnight local time. These are Earth's highest clouds, which are seeded by meteoroids. They float far above the Earth at the edge of space, some 51 miles above the Earth's surface. The video shows the regular clouds turning dark and moving slow across the lower sky, while the noctilucent clouds are seen high overhead catching the rays of the sun, which remain at very high altitudes. Although they remain rare and not fully understood, this is not the first encounter with red noctilucent clouds. In June of 2019, there was an outbreak of red NLCs over northern Europe. We know from research conducted back in the 1970s that the sunlight absorbed by these clouds first passes through the Earth's ozone layer, which filters the light, allowing the blue light to pass through while absorbing the red. But the origin of the red NLC clouds is still uncertain. A theory introduced by atmospheric scientists back in 1988 indicates that lower sun rays pass a few kilometers above sea level. These lower rays are reddened and then bent by refraction, allowing them to be redirected to the tops of the noctilucent clouds, where they are, are then observed from the Earth's surface. But even research specialists are the first to admit that they are not absolutely certain as to the origin of the red noctilucent clouds, which means that every sighting, as rare as they may be, remains a mystery. Only in times of darkness can we look up and see the stars. No one can deny their beauty and their calmness. If we take the time to look up, we will marvel at its relaxing motion. We will take a deep breath, and we will then release the bad things that may happen in our day. Thanks for watching.